Science, Technology, and Society It is an interdisciplinary discipline that analyzes the conditions under which scientific knowledge and technical systems are produced, distributed, and used, as well as the effects of these activities on various groups of people. Science and Technology in Society is based on science and technology history and philosophy, sociology, and anthropology, policy studies, and cultural and literate studies, all of which influence the techniques of analysis used in the subject. So let's explain about science. The human endeavor to comprehend the natural world with or without regard for its practical applications. Science seeks to find facts and relationship, then develop theories to explain these facts and interactions. And then let's move on to technology. Technology is the attempt by humans to affect the world by developing things that benefit people. Science investigates in order to learn, whereas technology investigates in order to create something valuable from that information. Without technology, some science experiments would not be possible. And lastly, we have the society. The sum total of our interactions as humans, including those we have in order to figure things out and produce things. A significant social group sharing the same physical or social territory, often subject to the same political authority and dominant cultural expectations, are a collection of persons engaged in sustained social interaction. Historical antecedents in which social considerations change the course of science and technology. The Middle Ages, often known as the Medieval Era, was a period of history that lasted nearly a thousand years, from the 5th to the 15th centuries CE. It is widely regarded as the transitional period between the age of classical antiquity and the modern era. The prehistoric period is divided into three periods, Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Humans of the old stone age lived in cave shelters, utilized simple stone and bone tools, and they cooked their prey over a regulated fire. Humans utilized small stone tools that were polished and occasionally made with points to use as pairs and arose during the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age, and they lived near bodies of water. The Bronze Age marks the beginning of armor, metalworking, textile, and pottery production. The birth of blacksmith occurred during the Iron Age, when humanity found techniques to heat and push iron. Weapons made of iron are more powerful than those made of bronze. During the Iron Age, the water system was also established. The early historical period began with the merging of the writing system and written documentation, including alphabets. In the Neolithic Age, also known as the New Stone Age, ancient humans transitioned from hunter-gatherer mode to agriculture and food production. Metal working progress throughout the Bronze Age. With the discovery of bronze, a copper and tin alloy, as well as developments in construction and art, including the invention of the potter's wheel and textile flourishing. Timeline of Major Scientific Inventions and Discoveries, Ancient Period to 19th Century In ancient times, when modern humans progressed from their forefathers, the acquisition and transformation of knowledge progressed in lockstep. Humans who were previously naked began to recognize the need for clothing. Different elements are slowly but steadily coming together to reach the level for complexity known as civilization. Agriculture is the principal source of subsistence for Sumerian civilization. To control flooding, they built dikes and canals to build an irrigation system. They constructed enormous constructions out of sun-dried clay bricks. In trade and farming, they devised the wheel, sail, and plow. A 360-day calendar was introduced. Dig canals and build earthen dikes to irrigate their crops and provide water to their livestock in Babylonian civilization. 
Babylonians astronomers complained about list of planets and stars after they adopted the Sumerian sexagesimal system. The Nile River provided Egypt with the required water to support agricultural operations during Egyptian civilization. Metals were used to make tools, weaponry, and agricultural implements in Egypt. They constructed massive pyramids. A 365-day calendar was devised by the ancient Egyptians. Around 1100 BC, the Greek civilization arose. Thales, Socrates, Hippocrates, Aristotle, Archimedes, and Plotomy were knowledgeable and gifted Greeks whose scientific works serve as the basis and pillars of Western civilization. The Romans established infrastructural networks and built highways connecting Rome to other parts of Italy during their civilization. They built large permanent constructions like the Dome and Colosseum. The plow was invented and the lunar calendar was developed in Chinese civilization. Acupuncture was first used by Chinese doctors. Solar eclipses could be recorded by astronomers. Natural gas was used by the Chinese to illuminate their homes. To write on, they utilized Chinese bamboo strips or bark paper. They invented the earthquake weather clock. History of Science, Technology, and Society During ancient times were transportation issues which were particularly important at the time because people were attempting to go to new areas and explore new vistas. And navigation aided them in their travels to new and unexpected places around the world. Then there's communication, which was crucial in their quest to locate and occupy new territories. Its origins can be traced back to the interwar period and continue throughout the Cold War when historians and sociologists of science, as well as scientists, became interested in the relationship between scientific knowledge, technical systems, and society. And now we will proceed to the intellectual revolutions in the field of science, technology, and society. There are four revolutions that we are going to tackle. These are the Copernican, the Iranian, Rhodian, and information revolution but this is not the overall discussion this is only the hint and the small details regarding on our topic these four revolutions highlights of how it started and how society changed later on you'll discover furthermore about this topic First, the intellectual revolutions that defined society in Copernican Revolution stated that in the 6th century, Ptolemy introduced the geocentric model where it showed that the Earth is the center of the universe, which was thought to be true by most of the people at that time. Copernicus is an astronomer who contradicts the geocentric model and proposed the heliocentric theory where planets revolved around the sun. The change from the belief of geocentric to heliocentric happened through the contributions of other important persons. The Copernican revolution influences conceptual changes in cosmology, religion, physics, and philosophy. Second is the intellectual revolutions that define society in Darwinian formulated his book on the origin of species in 1859 that presented evidence on how species evolved over time and the descent of man in 1871 that introduced the idea of all organic life under the reliance of revolutionary thinking. Darwin proposed the theory of evolution by natural selection where organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. The changes that allow an organism to better adapt to its environment can help it survive and have more offspring. There are two main points in his theory. 
First, all life on earth is connected and related to each other. Second, the diversity of life came about because of the modifications in population that were driven by natural selection or the survival of the fittest. Third, the intellectual revolutions that define society in Freudian revolution founded psychoanalysis. He described that the brain can be segmented into compartments. He developed an observational method to study humans' inner life, mainly focuses on human sexuality and evil nature of man. The Freudian revolution greatly affected or gave rise to the literature, visual art, and music. As you can see in the picture given, it illustrates the theory of Freudian that study humans' inner life or human personality and characteristic. It illustrates there the ego, id, super ego, and conscious, preconscious, and conscious. And lastly, the intellectual revolutions that define society in information revolution started from the Sumerian pictographs, which is the earliest writing system. Then comes the invention of Gothenburg printing press in 1455. This merged the use of typewriter and telegraph. Today, technologists are used widely which became easier with the help of internet to communicate and disseminate and store information. This has been the era in which technology has been prevalent. It is also known as the computer age that brought so much change in how we are living today. Basically, this information revolution is what we are right now and what we have right now. Okay, so let's move on to science and technology and nation building. Technology and nation building. Technology and nation building includes the Philippine government science and technology agenda. In here, technology plays a role that will improve human capabilities in possible to possible life changing matter. In the agenda, there are sectors. These are the production, identification, health, consuming needs, education, and transportation. Second, the major development progress and personalities in science and technology, in which the Philippine is developing country characterized by steady population, growth combined with robust economic challenges, and allocates significant resources to alleviate problems like poverty and exclusion. They need to develop a country science and technology has generally been recognized as one of the imperative of socio-economic progress in the contemporary world. And lastly, we have the science education in the Philippines. The Philippines' grade 1 to 10 science curriculum envisions the development of scientifically, technologically literate, and productive members of society. They must possess effective communication and interpersonal lifelong learning skills as well as scientific values and attitudes. The skills will be acquired through a curriculum that focuses on knowledge relevant to real world and encompasses methods of inquiry. These will implemented on a learning environment that promotes the construction of ideas and instills respect for others. Science and technology must be treated as part of human life that needs reflective and meditative thinking. Aristotle believed that human flourishing requires a life with other people. Aristotle taught that people acquire virtues through practice and set a set of concrete. Virtues could lead a person toward his natural excellence and happiness. According to him, there is an end of all actions that we perform which we desire for itself. This is what is known as eudaimonia flourishing, or happiness, which is desire for its own sake with all other things being desire on its account. Eudaimonia, a term that combines the Greek words for good and spirit, 
to describe the ideology. Eudaimonia defines happiness as the pursuit of becoming a better person. From Nicomachean Ethics, a philosophical inquiry into the nature of the good life for a human being. Human flourishing arises as a result of different components such as promises, friendship, wealth, and power. So, what is happiness? In psychology, happiness is a mental or emotional state of well-being which can be defined by, among others, positive or pleasant emotions ranging from contentment to intense joy. To behaviorists, happiness is a cocktail of emotions we experience when we do something good or positive. To neurologists, happiness is the experience of flood of hormones released in the brain to reward for behavior that prolongs survival. The Hinduistic view of well-being is that happiness is the polar opposite of suffering. The presence of happiness indicates the absence of pain. Because of this, Hinduists believe that the purpose of life is to maximize happiness, which minimizes misery. Now let us move forward to Chapter 5, The Human Flourishing as Reflected in Human Progress and Development. We are going to have a short preview about what this chapter is all about. Human flourishing came from the Greek word eudaimonia, which was used by Aristotle. It is an effort to achieve self-actualization and fulfillment within the context of a larger community of individuals, each with the right person his or her own such efforts. So, human flourishing as reflected in human progress and development is mainly an act or exertion a person does to reach his or her desired way of living. Forget about developing poor countries. It's time to de-develop rich countries. This statement was said by Jason Hickel, which is an anthropologist and an author. This idea was introduced by him, which means that the rich countries should slow down their consumption so that the poor nations can try to catch up. Sustainable Development Goals, or SDG, are a collection of 17 interlinked global goals designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. These 17 interlinked global goals are no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and partnerships for the goals. The main objective of this is to eradicate poverty by the year 2030 with the main strategy for eradicating poverty, which is growth.